that in some ways are um, kind of on the cutting edge of some of that stuff, mm -hmm. where, and it's a bigger part of the culture. So I think you definitely see some crazy festivals. Did we get one of the flyers with your starting kit uh, information? Uh, um, no. I did. I got one. Okay, good. I can look mm -hmm. at if you want another one, yeah, I can get you one as well. <laughs> oh, if you have it, yeah, uh, yeah, for real, sure. Quick, we'll wait till we're done here. But would your would that work in Washington too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, to tell you, thank you for the questions. I don't have any more at the okay. moment. Cool. <laughs> Did we talk Did you, about, um, do you have ex any experience with colony collapse? And what do you um, no personal experience, and that's a hard question because without, because they haven't been able to determine exactly what causes colony collapse, mm -hmm. um, when you lose a colony, you go, oh, gosh, was that it, you know? Um, so it's difficult to say. Have we had colonies just die out? Yeah. Yes. Or disappear? Um, I don't know that we've had, we haven't had any established colonies disappear. Mm -hmm. We've had a, uh, we, a newly hived colony, whether it be from a package or a swarm, that you come back the next day or a couple days later and they're just gone. And they mm -hmm. probably just moved out. Yeah, they did. They, something mm -hmm. about yeah. that space didn't appeal to them and then, so they moved on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that said, I, I don't think that we've ever personally had any with that. Um, and I think it's a, it's a little bit difficult to determine because you, the largest instances of colony collapse disorder are with commercial beekeepers, mm -hmm. with their migratory style of beekeeping. Um, now we're talking more, we're talking thousands of hives. So when you right. lose 30%, I mean, you lose 30% of 30,000 hives, that's 10,000 hives gone like that. Yeah. Um, I think there, I personally believe there's a connection between that, um, Migratory style of beekeeping and the colony collapse. They're exposed that, um, to a lot more things. Do you think that using the same species for most of the pollination is a problem? Like, sort of like monocropping? Um, yeah, absolutely. Makes them susceptible more to. Yeah, and actually, if you look at it, a honeybee's going to visit anywhere from, uh, and there's different numbers, but from what I've heard, um, anywhere from 80 to 100 different flowers. Um, on a on a collection route mm -hmm. um, you know in and that's one thing people think oh you know I don't live out in the country there isn't farms there isn't that sort of thing urban beekeeping is huge urban hives do incredibly well because of the number of backyard gardens and window box gardens and mm -hmm. I mean that stuff is I mean it's it's really pretty cool some of our most productive hives are the ones in my brother's backyard mm -hmm. in town yeah, I think yeah, definitely urban and suburban gardens are like, as they're growing, will be really interesting culture. Definitely, yeah. I don't know what they like can bring to, as far as like farm culture. Stuff you know, like. getting back to the question about monocropping, you know, I think it, I think, I mean, I, I can't speak to it from a scientific standpoint, but you know, if all I ate were cheeseburgers every day, or if all I ate was lettuce every day. You know, I'm, there's going to be things that I need to be getting that I'm not. You know, there's diversity and moderation is good for everything. You know, and I can't help but think that that applies to the honeybees as well. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. As far as uh, the technology that's been introduced, like cell phones, um, there's been a lot of talk about how that's harming bees. Is, have you seen any effect over your? Three generations? You know, that's hard. That's a hard question because um, we've had the introduction of so many different things over the last 50 years. Yeah. You know, we talk about technology and, and cell and that sort of thing, but we've also had the introduction of the Varroa mite, which came from the Asian honeybee. Yeah. So there's other things working against the honeybees. Uh, you know, so it's hard to say, it's hard to isolate and say we see an effect and now we can attribute it to this. You know, there's so many different factors over the last 50 years that, you know, can I say that I personally have seen it? I can't. Um, but I think everything plays into it. Is it understood whether that could actually, uh, the like radio waves could affect the bees' navigational systems or? Um, I don't, uh, you know, I can't speak to it specifically, but um, I, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, but, you know, that said, we're, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times we don't know what we don't mm -hmm. know, you yeah. know. Well, I guess um, you got to move the truck. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they, they're pressuring us to get your truck out of okay. here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, thank yeah. you very much for...